Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of biology, we shall discuss the part 2 of reproduction in plants topic. So moving on to the part 2 of reproduction in plants topic. So in the first part, we have seen the asexual reproduction topic. In the second part, we shall see the sexual reproduction in plants. So in asexual reproduction, vegetative parts are involved. In sexual reproduction, the reproductive parts of a plant are involved. Okay, new plants are obtained from seeds here. Okay, and what are the reproductive parts of a plant? Flower is a reproductive parts of a plant. Remember, very important question. And stamens are the male reproductive part and pistil is a female reproductive part in a plant. And flowers which contain either only the pistil or only the stamens are called unisexual flowers or flowers which contain both stamens and pistil are called as bisexual flowers. Okay. So moving on to male reproductive parts of a plant. So we know the stamen is a male reproductive part of a plant. So what does it contain? It contains two parts. The first is anther. The next is stalk or filament. You can see the diagram. Okay, the first above the top part is anther and the holding one is filament. In the anther we have pollen grains. Okay. So these are the male gametes of a plant. Anther contains pollen grains which are useful in the fertilization. Okay, moving on to the female reproductive part of a flower that is pistil. So pistil is a female reproductive part. It contains stigma, style and ovary. Remember in the order in the top we have stigma, then we have style, then we have ovary. Okay, the ovary contains one or more ovules. You can see the uh, cross section of the ovary. So ovary is the, the female gamete or the egg is formed in an ovule. Okay, moving on to male and female reproductive parts of a flower. You can see this stigma, style and ovary in the uh, pistil. And uh, in the stamen we have the anther and filament or stalk. The petals are of the flower and this is the green uh, leaves are the sepals okay moving on to pollination so generally pollen grains have a tough protective coat which pre uh, prevents them from drying up since pollen grains are light in weight they can be carried out from one place to another by wind water insects all these carry the pollen grains from one place to another generally insects visit flowers they are the pollinating agents okay and carry away pollen on their bodies some of the pollen lands on the stigma of a flower so that the pollination will take place so the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called pollination so if the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower it is called as self pollination if it lands on another flower of the same plant or that of different plant then it is called as cross pollination so if it falls on the same stigma of the same flower it is called uh, self-pollination. If it lands on the stigma of another flower or of another plant itself, it is called as cross-pollination. You can see in the diagram, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Okay. So the movement of pollen grains from uh, the stamen to the pistil is called as pollination. Then what is fertilization? So after the male gametes and female gametes fuse, the cell will be resulting after fusion of the gametes that is called zygote. The process of fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote is called as fertilization. Okay, the zygote will develop soon into an embryo. Okay, so it happens in the ovary. This embryo is developed generally in the ovary itself of the pistil, the female reproductive part of a flower. Next, how fruits and seeds formation takes place after the fertilization. So the ovary grows into a fruit itself. And then the other parts of the flower like uh, petals, sepals will fall off. The fruit is the ripened ovary. This is a question also. The fruit is the ripened ovary. The seeds develop from the ovules. The seeds contain an embryo enclosed in a protective seed coat. Some fruits are fleshy and juicy such as mango, apple and orange. And some fruits are hard like almonds and walnuts. You can see in the, the picture. So when we open the fruit and we have the cross section of the fruit, we can see the seeds. Suppose if the seeds, again the seeds are dispersed. So when I germinate these seeds, again a new plant may grow. Like we can see in the mango, apples, all those seeds inside the fruit. 
okay those are the ripened ovaries and fruit is a ripened ovary but seeds are also present right so those are the ovules actually embryo is enclosed in these seeds so when i plant these seeds they'll grow up into new plants so this is all for the reproduction in plants about sexual reproduction in the part two we shall meet in the next sessions thank you so much